So good day and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about filters or to be more precise about their clipping behavior because if you're like me you might have neglected or at least severely underestimated how soon these filters start clipping and how severely this impacts the way they sound. So here I have a little construct with uh, yeah an oscillator which delivers a signal uh, with 0 dB amplitude, then a gain reducer, which allows us to reduce the gain 24 decibels. And then here after the filter, we boost the signal uh, the same amount. And I control this via this value knob here. And as you can see here in the oscilloscope, uh, that doesn't change anything at all because we amplify the signal the same amount as we reduce it. So that changes, of course, as soon as I enable the filter and this is now just a wavetable directly routed into the filter and you can see the wave sound looks already noticeably different and this is with the filter at 33k and no resonance so this is the filter behavior when it actually does nothing and this is how it clips the sawtooth i suppose this is exactly how a moog filter does behave when you drive it uh yeah when you put it into saturation mode but it's kind of interesting to see that this is the default behavior when you just connect an oscillator to the filter. And now let's listen a little bit to how it, it sounds. I mean, at a first glance or listen, it doesn't sound too much distorted. But now let's compare this to uh, a signal which is not distorted. So because if I return everything to the default settings and now reduce the amplitude of the signal, we could do it here, of course, but uh, uh, I want gain compensation for now. That's why I do it here. So um, let's go like 50%. This is like minus 10 decibels here. And now let's, let's uh, listen to the sound. Yeah, it's it's significantly different. The resonance uh, cuts a lot more through, and the filter sounds a lot more. Um, I don't know the word in English. In German, we would say schmatzig. And this effect increases the more you amplify the resonance. Well, there's another way uh, we, we, we can deal with that. We don't need this these two gains. I just used them to, to illustrate it. Uh, if you open the info panel, you see that Almost all the filters have this Q limit settings, and this determines at which amplitude they start clipping. And the default value here is minus 10 decibel, which in my opinion is quite a lot, which means, uh, yeah, every average signal from an oscillator, which uh, peaks at around zero decibels, will automatically already drive the, the filter into distortion a lot. So. Now let's look at the signal again. Um, when we incre increase the Q limit, you can see that the, the clipping of the signal is, is reduced and at like minus 3.5 decibel, it's almost zero. Well, it, it still affects the, the signal if you compare it to the original. The original sawtooth is a completely straight line and the filter changes this a little bit, but this is just the characteristics of the filter, that's fine, that's what we want. And now, well, if I increase the resonance again, now it sounds like before when we reduced the gain here. Or at least a lot more. Let's go up. We have um, headroom here up to plus 12 decibels. Yeah, and I think you can hear it changed even more between zero and plus 12 decibels. That's just how extreme 
or how quickly this, these filters actually go into to clipping mode. And that's fine, but it's something you have to know and pay attention to. And well, if you increase this Q limit here, now the output gain is potentially a lot higher. So what I often do to even get a little bit more headroom is I put the Q limit to the maximum and then reduce the input volume a little bit. And now I can be reasonably sure that the filter is not clipping and I just get the clean, well, a mock filter does never sound really clean, but as clean as it gets, clean behavior from, from the, the, the Moglo path. Yeah, let's just listen to it with, uh, with an ADSR. And this is just massively different from the default we get if we return to minus 10. Well, not that this doesn't sound cool as well, but uh, dramatically different. So let's uh, look at a few other filters. And something you will see is that, yeah, the XP filter, for example, as well, uh, starts distorting. It looks quite different, though. Um, let's reduce that. Uh, let's go to the default. Well, it for one, it just amplifies the signal quite ridiculously. And you also see that the, the curve here looks different compared to the original signal. And basically what that means, it increases the fundamental amplitude. The signal will have more bass, which is nice. And when I increase the value here, you see how it slowly, I mean, it also gets a bit louder, but it slowly starts to straighten out. And at 100%, the signal is now almost identical to what we feed into it. So the distortion behavior is much more subtle, but it has an effect up to uh, minus 24 decibels when you feed in a signal. So it's quite extreme. So let's increase the Q limit here. And as you can see, well, if I go back to zero here, amplifies the signal quite dramatically. And usually I just um, reduce it here, like, yeah, at minus 10 decibels. We are back to the original. And also here, it's, it sounds dramatically different. Default setting. Let's reduce it here a little bit to avoid clipping. Yeah, I think you can hear that now that you compared it to the unclipped signal, that the signal is clearly distorting. There are other filters which have a very extreme clipping behavior. I like, uh, uh, is it the S? No, it's not the SVF, which of course has, has it as well. But the Salon key, for example, or is it, which, which one is it? Uh, yeah, we have here. Yeah. You can see this is, this is the unfiltered signal just passing it through kind of does that to the signal. And you can clearly hear when we operate uh, the, or modulate the filter, uh, the filter, the, the filter cutoff. And it sounds heavily And increasing the resonance has almost no effect until we pass the self-resonating, which, yeah, also almost doesn't. So here it's quite extreme. So let me add some headroom. And now, well, reduce the gain a little bit so that we don't, do not overshoot. Yeah, it's quite dramatic. And now you can also hear, at least I can, um, on, on, on my speakers, hear the difference between these two resonance modes, which before, I almost never could.
Yeah, another another filter which is heavily affected is the comb filter. And yeah, that's what it does to a signal. Which comes in at 0 dB. I mean, it's heavily distorting it. And then if you want to get some, yeah, comb filters. Almost nothing happens. But... If you do the same thing, open the Q limit, which sits here at the side as if it's as if it wants to be forgotten. Okay, clips. Massive how much bass this can produce. But it only behaves this way if you increase the Q limit and reduce the input volume. Yeah, another filter which is heavily affected by this is the vowel filter. filter. And you can see it inherited the setting from the previous filter. But the, uh, the Q limit on the vowels filter is even higher. It, they give you 16 decibels of, of headroom because they were probably aware of that clipping behavior. Yeah, and here as well, if you want clean vowels, you probably have to adjust these settings. Because, yeah, if you just connect the, the oscillator directly and start tweaking, you get this. I mean, it also sounds nice, but the vowels are a lot less pronounced and the signal is much more uh, compressed or, or clipped. Okay, yeah, that's it. And yeah, on another note, I have here, oops, I didn't want to delete them. I just wanted to disable them. So if I just, yeah, generate the sawtooth here and then pass it into a uh, filter plus, then by default, because the volume here is still kind of zero decibel, this filter, clips or not because I have my own default setting. This is how it would sound when you just insert it into the channel. And I introduced a little macro here, which uh, reduces the input volume and at the same time boosts the output volume, roughly the same amount so that I can quickly change uh, the, the filter behavior or the clipping behavior, depending, of course, on the amplitude of the signal that you uh, route into it. So, yeah, that's something you have to keep in mind. You can, of course, also open the grid, convert it to... No, uh, convert to FX grid. And once you've done that, Click on the filter and, and you can see that the Q limit is at minus 10. Yeah, it is quite ridiculous how much more you can get out of your filters if you know how they behave and how soon and how extreme they can go into clipping or distortion. At least to me, it was quite an eye opener when I finally realized how big this clipping range actually is and how much you can 
shape the sound when you go from zero, absolute no clipping, to, up to uh, extreme clipping behavior. So I hope it also helps some of you to realize the full potential of these amazing sounding filters that we have in Bitwig. And that's it for today. Like, comment, subscribe, and peace out.